Today we are going to be talking about the product, quotient, and power rule for logarithms. Let's go ahead and open it up with the product rule for logarithms. The product rule of logarithms says this, if you have the logarithm of a product, um, namely where the argument is a product, you can expand it. How can we expand it? You can expand it as logarithm of the first factor plus logarithm of the second factor. Cool. Now, the quotient rule for logarithm says this. Well, if you're taking the logarithm of a quotient, you can also expand it. How? You can expand it as a subtraction problem. And to do that, we're going to take logarith logarithm of the numerator and then subtract from it logarithm of the denominator. And then we're going to take a pause on the power on the power rule for logarithms in, for a moment. So uh, the moral of this story is this. If the argument is a product, then you can expand it to a sum. If the argument is a quotient, then you can expand it to a subtraction problem. And then the question that I ask myself is this. Uh, sometimes I, I, I'm a little bit confused. Is there a, a silly memory aid that will remind me how to expand it? And to answer your question is yes. So um, sometimes these, these rules for logarithms, it's a little bit hard for me to remember. And it's a little bit frustrating. So I'll just say uh, silly logarithm rules, they make me so mad. But uh, we're just going to slap a, an S at the end, and we're going to say silly logarithm rules that make me so mad. So someone had said it's always nice to vent out your frustrations, so let's go ahead and do that. So now the question is, what does my silly memory or my frustration have to do with the product and quotient rule for logarithms? Well, it actually has to do a lot. So hopefully this will remind me of the following. If the argument is a product or if we have multiplication, then when we expand it, we're going to expand it as an addition problem. But if the argument is a quotient or we have a division problem, when we expand it, we're going to expand it as a subtraction problem. So let's go ahead and do a quick example. So let's just say uh, we had some problem in the book and it reads logarithm uh, base 3 of 4x. And then we were asked to uh, use the product, quotient, and power rule for logarithms to expand it. Uh, and the question is, how are we going to do that? So first, I'm going to look at the argument. And then I'm going to ask myself, do I have a product? Do I have a quotient? Let me go ahead and bust out my silly memory aid. Silly uh, logarithm rules, they make me so mad. I'm going to highlight what we have. In the argument, we have a product. And I guess when we, since we have a product in the argument, then we are going to expand this as a sum. How? It's going to be logarithm of the first factor plus logarithm of the second factor. Cool. All right. So let's go ahead look at a. Let's go ahead and make up another quick problem. Okay. So let's just say uh, we were asked to uh, use these uh, rules to expand logarithm base five of eight ninths. And the question that I'm going to ask myself is this. Am I going to expand it to an addition problem? Am I going to expand it to a subtraction problem? I forget, so I'm a little bit mad. So let's go ahead and vent out our frustration. The quotient is a division. The quotient, my mistake. The argument is a division problem. So when we expand it, we're going to expand it to a subtraction problem. So we're going to take logarithm of the numerator and subtract from it logarithm of the denominator. Awesome. Moving forward, let's go ahead and uh, continue uh, with the power rule for logarithms. So the power rule for logarithms says um, it would be nice if we could tone down the uh, argument. How? If the argument is being raised to some power, we can bring the exponent down and then multiply it by the leftover logarithm. So for example, what if we had logarithm base 2 of x to the third power. How can we rewrite this by using the power rule for logarithms? So I'm going to ask myself, okay, does, is the argument raised to some power? Yes. Okay. So let's go ahead and apply the power rule for logarithms. So we're going to bring the exponent down and then multiply it by the leftover logarithm. So we have logarithm base 2 of x. Now, what if we were asked, what if we were giving an expression with the logarithm 
and we were asked to write it as a single logarithm. How will we, how would we do that? So let's just say we have two times the logarithm base three of four. How can we, we how can we use the power rule for logarithms to backtrack to a single logarithm? So I'm going to ask myself what's going on with the logarithm. In this case, we are multiplying it by some number. So if we use the power rule in reverse, then whatever we're multiplying the logarithm by, that will become the exponent of the argument. So this will give us logarithm base 3 of 4 to the second power. Last time I checked, the square of 4 is 16, and that will give us logarithm base 3 of 16. So now, uh, just for kicks, what if we uh, do two more problems that were not planned? Okay, uh, start from top to bottom. Okay, so let's just say we had logarithm base two of five, and we wanted to add to it, or we are adding to it logarithm base two of three. And suppose the direction says uh, use the product quotient and power rule for logarithms to write it as a single logarithm. Now, what if, what if this problem is a trick question? What if it's not possible to write as a single logarithm? So we're just going to assume that we can until we realize that we cannot. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to vent out my frustration. Silly logarithm rules, they make me so mad. I'm going to highlight what I have. Do I have an addition problem? Do I have a subtraction problem? Well, in this case, we have an addition problem. So if we have an addition problem, we can totally backtrack this to a single logarithm. How? We're going to multiply the arguments. So this will give us logarithm base 2, and we're going to multiply the arguments. Last time I checked, product of 5 and 3 is 15. So that will give us logarithm base 2 of 15. And to wrap up this unit, let's go ahead and do another bonus problem. So what if the problem read logarithm base 3 of 10 minus logarithm base 3 of 5? And the directions for, were uh, use the properties of logarithms to write this as a single logarithm. And again, uh, what if it's a trick question? So same speech, we are going to assume that we can write it as a single log until we realize that we can't. So I'm like, silly logarithm rules, they make me so mad. So I'm going to vent out my frustration. Circle what we have. We have a difference or a subtraction problem. And if we're subtracting two logarithms, then we can backtrack it to a single log. How? We are going to divide the quotients. So that will be logarithm base 3. And the quotient will be the first argument divided by the second argument. Last time I checked, quotient of 10 and 5 is 2, so that will give us logarithm base 3 of 2. Alright guys, thanks.